everyone, Dan Tix with Keystone Entertaining Walls here coming to you with our second installment in the Keystone Tech Talk series with the question, how much embedment does my retaining wall need? Obviously, this is going to vary by the size of the wall and your project site conditions. However, we do have some simple guidelines to follow when determining the proper amount of embedment that the retaining wall will need. Without further ado, let's get to it. Before we can talk about amendment, we must first talk a little bit about the gravel leveling pad utilized in the construction of the retaining wall. Here we have a simple schematic showing an excavation for a retaining wall. We have the gravel leveling pad width plus the additional depth needed to incorporate the leveling pad into our retaining wall construction. The width of the leveling pad is approximately the depth of the unit measured from face to tail plus one foot. So if we have a 12 inch deep unit, we have an approximately two foot wide leveling pad. The depth of the leveling pad is always six inches minimum. The leveling pad generally consists of a road based type material and that can be compacted through ordinary means such as a vibratory plate compactor. We're checking to make sure that the leveling pad is, is as level as possible front to back and side to side and the more work that we put into doing this leveling pad correctly the less work we have to do when setting our base course for the retaining wall construction. The base course is the most important component of a retaining wall construction as it sets the tone for the remainder of the wall construction courses. And finally we always start at the lowest point in our retaining wall. If we have a, a, a base that is stepping, we start at the low point and work out from there, and this helps control our batter during wall construction. Let's talk about our embedment now. Here we have a typical wall section, and for the purposes of this discussion, we've added a slight toe slope to this uh, typical section, so we can talk about the minimum requirements for a sloping toe, as well as a level toe here. When we're talking about embedment, we're talking about a measurement from the top of the leveling pad to the ground line in front of the retaining wall. Height in our discussion will be the exposed height of retaining wall, which shows the wall from the, that ground line to the top of the wall. Our design height or total wall height is the top of the leveling pad to the top of the retaining wall. And additionally here for the sloping conditions, you'll notice we in a four foot theoretical bench which we'll add to our discussion. And why do we need embedment? Well embedment protects this base of the retaining wall. We don't want to have erosion or in water conditions scour take away this base and undermine our wall facing and leveling pad as that is a failure mechanism we're trying to avoid. When we have proper embedment we can avoid uh, scouring out or, or eroding away our base of wall. So here we have our minimum criteria and we work with what we call, like to call a 10% 10, 10 rule, right? Or method of 10, okay? Um, we have our minimum requirement, which is always a half foot or six inches or a one unit minimum. So for eight inch courses, we're gonna be following that that rule versus the half foot rule. So for example, let's say we have a wall height that is five feet with a sloping toe, but our unit height is eight inches. We would take our H over 20. This is for level conditions only and simple landscape walls. And we divide, by, divide our wall height by 20 to get three inches or a quarter foot. Three, uh, quarter foot is less than the half foot, but it's still less than the eight inch minimum, or 0.67 feet. Therefore, our minimum embedment for the, for the coursing would be eight inches. If we go back to that now to show that. So we'd have our eight inches starting here is our minimum embedment. And our total uh, area in the ground would include the leveling pad plus that first course. Now let's go through a sloping toe example. And let's utilize this two to one example. We're having our 10, uh, 
uh, 10% criteria rule first and foremost. And let's utilize a 10 foot example to make the numbers simple. So we go back to this, okay? We utilize this four foot theoretical bench to start our base minimum embedment criteria, so that 10% rule. If we have a 10 foot high wall here, 10 foot high exposed, we'd start with a minimum embedment criteria of 10 divided by 10 is one foot, okay? Next, we apply our four foot theoretical bench criteria. So if we impose this four foot theoretical bench with a two to one slope in front of it, we'd have four foot horizontal at two to one would be two additional feet vertically against our wall face. So we come back to our chart, we have our h over 10, one plus two is three foot minimum. So now our embedment depth is increased for sloping toe slopes in front of the wall. And for a two to one criteria, this would be measured from the top of the leveling pad to this ground line of three feet. Pretty simple, huh? Finally, you know, we talked about starting our wall at the lowest point of the retaining wall. At these steps, we also need to maintain our minimum distance. So for a level location from the wall, we, at the step location, we want to make sure that it's at 8 inch criteria, or if it's a 2 to 1, a 3 foot criteria way up here, right? But this ground line shows where, for simplicity, the 8 inch criteria. So when we have, as we approach these areas, we need to know what these ground elevations are in front of the wall. So we keep our eight inch minimum. And you'll see here that we have additional embedment criteria for uh, these areas that we can't really avoid just so that we can get to the minimum embedment criteria over here. And this is what can happen when we don't meet that, right? We actually end up exposing the gravel leveling pad areas within our retaining wall. And we don't have where the ground line should be well above up here. And sometimes this can be an error in reading the plans or a grade change during uh, the wall construction process, but we always want to make sure that our final grade covers our leveling pad and follows our minimum embedment criteria. That concludes this uh, second Tech Talk video. Uh, for more inspiration and ideas, please go to keystonewalls.com.